Take a work. Where you go? Oh wow! 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 SCP-2662 Cthulhu. Kind of rhymes a little bit of a bar. All right, we're going to see what it's talking about, bro. You know, by the guys at Infographics, they've been going hard for the Goyard, bro. They've been really getting it out the mud, grinding, grinding, videos every three, four days. It's crazy. Uh, but let's see, let's see what it's talking about, bro. Let's see what it's talking about. Let's see what it's talking about. 15 men and women clad in red robes kneel before um nah this is it for today uh because i have to uh i gotta record a bunch of stuff for the main channel so i'm i'm only gonna be streaming right now and that's it over 50 men and women clad in red robes kneel before an unholy altar they chant and mutter indecipherable words words of cruelty and madness of obsession and sacrilege not long ago these were regular people Computer technicians, teachers, plumbers, construction workers, accountants. This was before they fell under the ungodly influence of a new ruler. The center of this makeshift place of worship was once a normal school gymnasium, but it's now the home of a huge statue. A humanoid being, wreathed in tentacles. Its head is more like a squid or cuttlefish than anything resembling an actual human face. While he's known to the cultists as the tentacled god, the beast they worship is known to the SCP Foundation as SCP-2662, and he sits in the belly of one of their expansive containment facilities, locked away from the world. But not for long, if his devoted followers have anything to say about it. This is their god, all-powerful and unchanging, and when it comes to springing him from containment, no tactic is too vile or underhanded to get the job done. Their mortal leader and high priest, a man in a purple robe calling himself Brother Marsh, walks among their crouched forms. Ain't no way I'm about to bow down to a person who can't even grow a full head of hair, bro. I will <laughs> smack the middle of his head, bro. Ain't no way, bro. I mean, the purple robe kind of clean, though. He's kind of clean. Can't he lie. He whispers instructions for the great day of liberation that's soon to come, providing everyone I like your cut, their G. part. I like it's a cut. plan months in the making, and one that, if I it like goes off cut. without a hitch, could free their monstrous god into the world. They would strike at the very heart of their enemy, the SCP Foundation, when they least expect it. And nothing shall stand in their way. How could they lose when they have a god on their side? But why did all these normal people become violent zealots for a squid-faced deity? It all began with a dream. To those who experienced these dreams, they felt more like prophecies, premonitions of the glorious horrors to come. A red sky, billions dead, and billions more enslaved, a dark silhouette on the horizon, <laughs> their tentacled god holding dominion over all. At first, it just seemed like a strange nightmare. The ones who experienced it woke up shaken and afraid, hoping to shake the images from their mind, but they couldn't. Every night, the nightmare would return. They'd see the images, the red sky, the dead and enslaved, the tentacled god. And after a while, it would come to them even when they weren't asleep, eventually happening whenever they closed their eyes. Little by little, this scene stopped looking so hideous and started to look glorious. They felt his presence in their minds, slowly pushing them towards their inevitable future. They started to realize that they wanted him to rule over the universe and to experience the honor of serving him. Many of them abandoned their homes and families, leaving their friends and loved ones left to worry that they'd gone insane. In their eyes, they were safer than they'd ever been. They finally had purpose. They were working in service of something far greater than themselves. The influence of the tentacled god drew them closer yeah, to Yeah, what is happening? They would meet in secret, exchanging information from the prophecies their ruler sent to them in their dreams. They worshipped together, building altars and idols to congregate around. They performed dark blood rituals involving human and animal sacrifice. It was when Brother Marsh, the Anointed One, arrived to guide them towards their true mission that things kicked into high gear. Just three months prior, Brother Marsh had been an office drone working in data entry for a large insurance company. If y'all like Lovecraft, make sure y'all watch Lovecraft Country, bro. That show is 
excellent. Still haven't finished it because I've been watching Naruto and a lot of other things. But it's an excellent show, bro. Make sure you watch Lovecraft Country. But yeah, bro, Cthulhu's from Lovecraft, bro. Y'all are wildin' if y'all don't know. But anyways. Before the tentacled god invaded his thoughts with a simple message. Free me. And the new world I create shall be your playground. Since then, he devoted himself completely to the cause, quitting his job and maxing out his credit cards to help fund his new life's purpose, yeah. infiltrating the SCP Foundation and releasing his inhuman ruler from its imprisonment. That was the single goal he united the cultists under, freedom for the tentacled god. And at long last, they had all the pieces in place to strike. They'd finally gathered the necessary intel to subvert the will of the most powerful secret organization on Earth. Even the strongest institution is made of people, and people are weak. Unlike the almighty tentacled god, people could be broken. The people in question were Kelly Thompson, Sidney Levitt, Jordan Broche, Dr. Juan Gutierrez, and Jill- Oh, uh, please don't tell me they fell into the, they fell into control. They fell into control, so Cthulhu? All right, bro. Larson. Dr. Juan Gutierrez was a researcher with level 3 clearance on the site where the tentacled god was being contained. Sidney Levitt and Jordan Broche were both security officers charged with verifying personnel clearance on site. Kelly Thompson was a member of site administration with research authorization powers, and Jillian Larson was a research assistant who often collaborated with Dr. Gutierrez. These five were the key to getting access to SCP-2662 and bringing their plan to fruition. Normally, personnel dossiers on people working for the Foundation were highly confidential, but the devotees of the tentacled god had their ways. They had a number of computer experts in their ranks, more than capable of hacking in and pulling some basic information off of Foundation servers <laughs> without being detected. For the other information they needed, they turned to some good old-fashioned torture. Which is often the most effective method. Bro, how many, how many videos this guy been in, bro? He been in like seven, eight. He been in like almost every SCP infographics video, bro. Leave Jamal alone and let him live a life, all right? When you why, why he got to be the one getting tortured, bro? That badass fade, bro. Don't even got. Uh, let me stop. Some quick results. Of course, while the cult's grip on sanity may have been a little tenuous, they weren't stupid. While gathering their intel, they also made sure to find out what exactly they were up against. SCP-2662 was being held in a humanoid containment cell and guarded by on-site Task Force Town 9, better known as the Belligerent Bodyguards. These aren't lazy donut-chomping mall cops. These are a heavily trained, heavily armed fighting force. Though the cultists had one thing that these Foundation soldiers didn't, the element of surprise. For everything to go off perfectly, Brother Marsh's plans would have to be executed within a single day, and they were already on the clock. Tau-9 had been charged with tracking down any new SCP-2662 cults and dismantling them, and Brother Marsh knew that it was only a matter of time before the Foundation tracked them down and did the same to them. If they wanted any chance of freeing the tentacled god, then they'd need to strike quickly and with overwhelming force. The SCP-2662 worshippers were able to secure the addresses of the five key Foundation personnel and station members outside each of them, including one who could realistically imitate each. They waited for night to fall and broke into each of their homes as they slept. What followed was a sequence of ruthless and efficient murders done in the cause of freeing their god. Dr. Gutierrez was shot in the head while he slept. Sidney Levitt and Jordan Broche were both stabbed to death before either even realized what was happening. Thompson, who'd gotten up to use the bathroom, went down in a hail of machine gun fire. Jillian Larson had seen that masked figures were breaking into her home and attempted to flee, but was caught and beaten to death by cultists in her hallway. It was a strange irony that people whose day jobs entailed working with some of the most dangerous and nightmarish anomalies imaginable were murdered in their homes by nothing more than regular humans. So far, Brother Marsh's plan had gone perfectly, with all five key personnel murdered within a two-minute period. Next, the selected doppelgangers stole clothes from their victims' closets and were handed the correct forged documentation. The next morning, each replacement began their journeys to the site where the tentacled god was being contained, 
while the rest of the cult arm themselves in preparation for their own yo, part. Yo, how y'all go from worshiping and, 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 and to, to strapped up? Okay, for sure. For sure. In the plan. Nobody at the Foundation seemed to notice anything amiss when the five arrived on site. When you work for the SCP Foundation, more mental energy is devoted to following the rules that keep you alive than to memorizing the faces of all your co-workers, and each one slipped neatly into position, disappearing into the familiarity of office life. But infiltrating the site was one thing, getting past the belligerent bodyguards and into the cell of the tentacled god would be another thing entirely. That's where the rest of the cult would come into play. Heavily armed with whatever firearms they could get their hands on, the rest of the devotees of the tentacled god, Brother Marsh included, would attack the containment site head on. In the ensuing chaos, the five cultists who had already infiltrated the site could take advantage of the distraction and break into the containment chamber. It was perfect. They launched their attack from the outside and from within. When Brother Marsh declared that the time was right, the assault began. A legion of gun-wielding cultists seemed to spring out of nowhere and started shooting up the warehouse that was a front for the containment site. The site quickly mobilized guards and task force members to take on the sudden threat, and just as Brother Marsh had anticipated, the site director called on the majority of Tau-9 to help repel the violent cultists from their perimeter. Tau-9 obeyed, leaving three task force members behind to guard SCP-2662's containment chamber. They expected to be guarding the cell from rampaging religious zealots seeking an audience with their god. What they didn't expect was a group of five Foundation employees walking right up to them and opening fire. <laughs> two Tau-9 members and taking the third as hostage. While the war was being waged outside, the infiltrators had found the tentacle god's containment cell in the low-risk humanoid ward. Their hostage insisted that using him wouldn't give them any leverage. The rest of his team would neutralize the whole group, him included, if that's what it took to stop them. The infiltrators explained that using him as leverage was never their intention. He wasn't a hostage at all. He was a sacrifice. The cultists of the tentacled god detonated explosives, okay. creating a hole in the wall and finally giving them He thought He thought he was so hard, talking about some, oh, they're gonna kill us all. Ra ra ra! Yeah, yeah. We're not using you. We're not using you for that at all, buddy. Access to their deity. They climbed through and gazed upon him in awe. There stood SCP-2662, twice as tall as a regular man, with ten huge tentacles emerging from its back. In their months of envisioning this creature, they pictured it sitting on a throne made of thousands of human bones ready to dictate its commands to the obedient liberators. What they certainly didn't expect was to see the tentacled god hunched over a computer screen. Still, gods work in mysterious ways. <laughs> what, bro? So Cthulhu really just a Tony Hawk? So they stuck to the plan and began chanting. They pulled out a sacrificial dagger and began sacrificing their captured Tau-9 member. It was at this point that SCP-2662 turned and saw what they were doing with a look of pure horror. He rose up from his computer, his headphones getting caught as he did so. He told them to go away, that he didn't want them here, and that them murdering people in his bedroom like this was inconsiderate and disgusting. The cultists became even more confused. Why wasn't their god accepting their offerings? What were they doing wrong? They tried more chanting and painting arcane symbols on the floor in blood, but this just seemed to make the creature angrier. He told them, in a tone more fitting for a teenage boy than a Lovecraftian god, to just leave him alone so he could play his video games. This was seriously not cool. The cultists were baffled. They told the tentacled god that they were there to free him. He replied that he didn't need saving that crazy stalkers like them were why he turned himself into the Foundation in the first place. Before the cultist infiltrators could get another word in, the remaining members of Tau-9 stormed into the containment cell and gunned them down with surgical precision. The war outside was already over. Brother Marsh and the rest of the cultists were all killed in the firefight. Tau-9 didn't look the least bit surprised upon entering 2662's cell. This was a common occurrence, unfortunately. They had to deal with an attempted cult invasion every few months, because SCP-2662's main anomalous ability 
is inspiring violent cults who relentlessly track down and worship it with arcane and bloodthirsty rituals. The problem is, 2662 doesn't do this consciously and definitely doesn't like the results. That's why he's under the voluntary care of the SCP Foundation, who keeps him amused with video games and reading material, while fending off the deranged cults who try to invade and abduct him. Following the termination of the devotees of the Tentacle God, just one of many cults who'd broken into 2662's containment cell, the remaining Tau-9 members apologized to the tentacled creature for the disturbance, allowing him to return to his gaming. They assured him that it'd probably be at least a few more months before something like this happened again. SCP-2662's cell was repaired, and the Foundation returned to its task of seeking out would-be cult emancipators, because for the SCP Foundation, it's not always about the anomaly that's being kept in containment, but what's being kept out. Now go check out SCP-096 The Shy Guy and SCP-08- Bro, <laughs> Yeah, KJ not liar, bro. He kind of cool. He kind of cool, bro. This, bro, this is the weirdest SCP ever. I did not see that plot twist coming at all.